or they grew up in the same fat phobic society that we all did and some of that fat phobia came through in these lyrics. What do you think? I find it extremely difficult to predict what you will find acceptable. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nadia. Thank you so much for coming to hang out on another video. And a really big thank you to everyone who's been subscribing, liking, commenting, and supporting the channel in any way. It really means a lot to me, so thank you, thank you. Before we start, I wanted to ask a question since I can't make a poll yet. I just got my camera and I was wondering if anyone had opinions on whether commentary videos like this would even benefit at all from having a camera, like a visual setup, or is the commentary just kind of enough? Let me know down in the comments if you care to give me your opinion. Like, no one cares. You don't get an award because you watch less TV. Most people who are actively on a weight loss journey have good intention. No one pursues a weight loss journey because they're like, fuck the fat community, right? Like, no one's claiming that. Posting content like this being like, oh my god, who the cares if it's fat phobic i mean do you not understand how problematic fat phobia is the systemic oppression that fat people face on a day-to-day -day basis mostly due to all of the bias and false information that we have on body size fat phobia affects every single person not just the fat community and to sit there and be like no one cares that's the problem no but maybe no but maybe though right yeah, so the actual problem is that we're larger than we've ever been historically. It's not that people are taking action to achieve body sizes that promote long and fulfilling lives. All the accessible seating in the world isn't going to walk in the park for you. The term health has to be defined so specifically or broadly, not sure, but either way, it's not the definition most of us are working with when the claim is you can be healthy at all sizes. You don't know me and I don't know you and you don't know everybody's reasons for weight loss. But personally, for me, I had a really complicated pregnancy and I was put on bed rest for months and I gained weight very rapidly. I mean, within a couple of months, I gained 85 pounds. Imagine that much weight that fast and how what it would do to your body. I was at the point where I couldn't even get up from bed to go feed my newborn baby when she was crying in the night because my joints were so hurting from the extra weight so fast. After about 20 pounds down, my feet stopped hurting as much, my knees don't ache as much, my back isn't hurting as much. I will never not be able to take care of my baby again because of the weight that I put on. It's not fat phobic to admit that my weight caused me health issues. I speak for myself. I don't speak for any other person and I don't really give a shit if anybody else wants to lose weight or not. If someone wants to be 600 pounds, 400 pounds for their entire life, how does that affect me? It doesn't. The same way that me wanting to lose weight doesn't affect you or any other fat person ever. It's true. Isn't it wild how many TikToks we've seen from this community talking about, I don't owe you an explanation about my body size, I don't owe you weight loss, but now that they're wielding the term fat phobia around in an ironically oppressive way, the rest of the world is having to explain that their weight loss isn't fat phobic, if that's something they care about being labeled. And because some people are so intent on spreading the idea that body size is inconsequential to health, People are having to explain that they aren't just being vain, but that for them, weight actually did affect their health. Is this actually progress? I love that this girl is snapping back, but I also can't believe it's something a person has to defend now. I want to talk about the There's Worse Things to Be Than Fat song that's circling around, but I am not stitching or duetting it because I am not welcoming fat phobes into my comments. Basically, someone wrote a song about how there's worse things to be than fat. You could be racist or a litterer or chew with your mouth open. The obvious subtext of using the word worse, meaning that that's still bad. It's just not as bad as those other things. And anyone who points this out in the comments is being told, oh, you know what they meant and you just look for things to complain about. First of all, impact over intent, always. We have got to fix the societal problem where we try to help a marginalized group. That group says, not only does this not help, it is actually harmful. And the response to that is to be like, you should be grateful we did anything. It is truly unhinged. 
And second, a slip of the tongue when speaking is not the same as writing, producing, and posting a song. No part of me is saying that that creator is bad. However, they grew up in the same fat phobic society that we all did, and some of that fat phobia came through in these lyrics. What do you think? I find it extremely difficult to predict what you will find acceptable. Okay, so I'm going to try to remember to link this song down for people who haven't heard it. I personally don't consider myself a fan of it, but I did think that the aim of the song was nice. However, I am a thin person listening to the song, so I'm not going to pretend to know what it's like to be a non-thin person listening to this. But from my perspective, it seems like someone did exactly what is begged of thin people, use your quote-unquote privilege as a platform, and guess what? It wasn't good enough. I really love language, and I understand what she means by the use of the word worse. But when I substitute worse for other words that could have been used, it actually changes the song to make it sound worse. <laughs> so there are other things to be besides fat. You could be racist. You could be mean. Does that not make them sound more like they're on par with each other? We could try there are better things to be than fat, with the implication being that fat is good. There are better things to be than fat. You could be racist. Um, no, that does not work. You get my point, right? Language is complicated, so focusing on that word as the reason for why this isn't body positive enough just seems kind of picky to me. I also think it's weird that this song is problematic, but the song about being tired of skinny bitches is like an anthem to them. If you ain't at the gym, then where the fuck you at? <laughs> I'm busy dismantling diet culture because videos like this make people feel like they have to work out every single day but they actually don't. I'm sorry that we all just listened to that, but really, I am tired of diet culture being turned into a Disney-like villain by this community. What's more amazing to me is the fact that they think diet culture is solely the industry that tells you to lose weight, get in shape, whatever, and not Domino's pizza commercials. They are two sides of the same coin. You remember those Got Milk campaigns? We were not bombarded with milk commercials because the government wanted to make sure we were getting our calcium. We were bombarded with those as part of a dairy checkoff program. The Department of Agriculture decides that dairy isn't making enough money, and the next thing you know, Domino's has a cheese stuffed crust pizza as a literal extension of this government program. But that's not problematic. An entire government program aimed at pushing product regardless of health implications is fine, but a billboard for your local gym is societal oppression. Diet is what you eat on a regular basis, not the meal plans you try from time to time. So it would be wise for everyone to examine why they eat the foods they eat, not just this community. To assume you have an idea of the experiences of a thin person in this way is ridiculous. You cannot balance your ideas and relationships with thin people if your perception is that thin people around you never deal with criticism. I see the word thins and the word thinnies thrown around. It's never positive, yet I don't feel comfortable summing up anyone as their size. These people would take offense if I wrote them off as the fats. I don't need people to coddle me in terms of how they discuss my weight. I can be a skinny bitch to whoever wants to see me that way, but I can't not point out the hypocrisy here. It's not. Do you consider yourself a hero? I want to give a content warning that I'm about to mention ED. I haven't done enough research to know where the BOPO movement started, but I do know that it's evolved from where it started. And I have to mention that she lists larger bodies 
over disabled bodies. Anyways, where we are now with this is that it's basically for all bodies. And honestly, this video is a slap in the face to every thin person who's experienced or is experiencing an ED. It's a serious disorder that people die from, and seeing photos or videos that show similar bodies to yours while you struggle with ED could be really grounding. From my own personal experience, not with ED, just with body insecurity, when I see content like this, it really does help me. It helps me stop thoughts about these roles aren't normal or my body shouldn't look like this when I sit, whatever it is. This might not be the body positivity that everyone needs, but it is the body positivity that some people need. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care until then.